Welcome to part two of process order costing. This is where we're going to go step by step by step. If you want to follow along, open up your books to page 1215 through 1218. I've identified here nine transactions and they are word for word what's inside the book. Instead of putting them in journal entries, we're going to do that in T accounts. Because on the exam, what are we going to do? T accounts. Okay. Let's check it out. I hope that's close enough. <laughs> cool. All right. Uh, so what happened? We always start with raw materials. So transaction one is exactly that. We purchased materials on account for 175 bucks. So our raw materials inventory is going to be debited what? 175,000. And that is transaction one. Let me put that in a different color so we can keep track. Oops. Remember, after each, after each transaction, we got to remain balanced. OK. So if we bought them on account, what is the other side to that? You guessed it, accounts payable. So I'm just going to do that right underneath. That's accounts payable. You can put here vendor if you want. And that's going to be credited. All right, transaction one. $175,000. Okay, easy squeezy so far, so good. Nice and balanced. I hope so. Okay, cool. Now, what are we going to do? Now we're going to start to assign. This is what makes job order, I mean, process order costing different from job order costing. We're going to start to assign to different whips. So in this case, we're going to have two whips. Let's check them out, see what they are. So we have direct materials assigned $140,000 to our assembly whip and 19,000 to our cutting whip. And of course, we're always going to have manufacturing overhead, and that's $2,000 indirect materials to our manufacturing overhead account. So we need to write three T accounts. First one, let's go assembly, I'm sorry, whip, whip dash assembly. I have a T account there. Now let's go whip dash cutting. And let's go here, manufacturing overhead. OK, now let's see what happened. Uh, actually, we're going to do four T accounts. Um, actually, so the credit's coming out of our raw materials. All right, here we have 140,000 direct materials assigned to assembly. So I'm going to start with the two. And that's a debit, because that's coming in. Now it's 140,000 dollars. Now we have 19,000 to cutting. This is still transaction 2. And lastly, 2,000 of indirect materials. to manufacturing overhead. So we have three debits. What's going to be credited? Raw ma Materials. How much? Whatever this plus that plus that equals, which is 161,000. Two. This is still transaction two. 161. Okay. So far, so good. Are we still balanced? I do believe so. You can go ahead and move your books to page 1216. I should hear lots of papers turning. Okay. Transaction three, this is where we start to, now we're still in assigning mode, right? We haven't actually started making the product yet. From raw materials, we're gonna assign. And that's with materials. So does labor come out of materials? No. Labor comes straight into our whips. So let's see where that comes from. Okay. So we have direct labor, 20,000, and that is assigned to assembly. So this is transaction three. Assembly whip, three, and we have 20,000. Okay, check mark. Now we have 3,840 to our cutting. 3,840, it's three. Check, and 1,500 to indirect label, labor. And that is three. Now, we have three debits. Where does the credit come out of? Not raw materials, it's going to go into wages payable.
Okay, what's the total of those three? We have 20,000. In fact, let me just go and label this here. Direct labor, direct materials, uh, direct materials, direct labor, and direct Okay, so it's 1,500 plus 3840 plus 20,000 equals, I'll save you the math, 25,340. Down here. 25,340. That is transaction three. So far, so good. Nice and good. Nice and good. Okay. Here we go. That was wages payable. Transaction four. Now, are we going to start making stuff? Maybe. Let's see. So we have, oh, I'm sorry. That's transaction three. Done. Done. Now we have depreciation. Is that overhead? You better believe it is. So 35,000 machinery depreciation. Do we need a T account for that? We most certainly do. First, we're going to put a manufacturing overhead. So let's go and label that. That's four, and that was 35,000. And we can just call that DEP. Now we need our T account uh, accumulated depreciation, and that's going to be the credit of how much? 35,000. Now we have indirect. Where is that going to go? Still manufacturing overhead. But if you read it here, paid in cash. Do we need a T count for cash? You better believe it. So we're going to go ahead and include this. So we're still on transaction four. And that was 20,000 indirect cutting. IDC. And that's going to move out of, now we're going to go cash account. That's coming out for 20 grand. 20, 20, 35, 35. Debit, debit, credit, credit. Still good? Still nice and balanced? I do believe we are. Okay, Tran that was transaction four. Check mark, check mark, check mark, check mark, check mark, check mark. Transaction five. Now we're still assigning here. We have $48,000 coming out of assembly and 11,000 going into cutting. So now we're actually allocating our overhead. So this is how much overhead we have in total. Now with our predetermined allocated rate, which is given to us, we're gonna go ahead and start assigning it into our accounts. So here we have 48,000 to the assembly department. So 48,000. We're going to call that Mo. Now it's transaction five. Okay, and now we're going to use the other one 11,000 of cutting. Mo five. Okay, so we have two debits. Where does that get credited? Aha. Now it's going to get sucked out of our manufacturing overhead. Because of this total, we've allocated a certain percentage of that to our, our assembly line and our cutting line. So that is given to us, and the total is 59,000. Are we still balanced? We should be. OK. Transaction six is when we actually start making the product. That's the difference. In job order costing, we're making the product pretty much immediately. Process order costing, we make sure everybody has whatever they need in every department before we even start. So transaction six is when we're starting to make stuff. Okay. So now we're assigning uh, a price to a number of units. And we're going to be transferring things out of there. Um, so this is per period, so per accounting period. So this isn't for a particular job. This is how many units they made in this period. That's what's what, what the difference is. Okay, so let's take a look at transaction six. What happened? So we got to move um, $176,000 out of our assembly line. That's going to be a credit, exactly. Six, 176. Now where are we going to put that? Into cutting as a debit. 
and I'm going to put here AT, which was assembly transfer. You don't have to label it that detailed. The numbers will do, but this is just so you can follow along. Oops, does this stop recording? Hope not. Nope, we're still recording. Okay. Um, okay, so that's part of it. Now what do we do? That's it for transaction six. We're starting to make stuff. Now transaction seven, same idea. Now we're moving 201,400 um, from our cutting to our final goods. So as we're, as we're making the product, we're already transferring it to finished goods. It's not a particular job. As we make it, we push it out through. Because people need toothbrushes. We cannot wait. Okay, so we have uh, 201. So we're going to get out of cutting. Transaction 7. 201, 400. It's coming out of there, and where's it going into? Finished goods. We need T account? You better believe it. And this was transaction 7. 201, 400. See, did we satisfy from cutting to finished goods? We most certainly did. Okay, transaction eight. Now where are we at? Um, okay, now that we have some units made, now let's sell some units. Make sense? Yes, it sure does to me. Okay, so here we have, when you divide the units, so if you divide 201, 400 by 38, thousand units, you should get $5.30 per unit. Um, we're going to be selling 35,000 units. Our cost is $5.30, so our, our total cost is $185,000. We're going to be selling them at $8 each. So we're making them for $5.30, we're selling them at $8. So we're making $280,000 Profit. Um, no, I'm sorry. Two hundred eighty thousand dollars in revenue. So how do we account for all of that? We made the sale. Now, do Target, Walmart, Kmart, do they pay cash when they buy things? No, they pay an account. And as mentioned here, it says here they paid on account. The puzzles were sold on account. So what kind of account are we going to need for that? We need two, sales and accounts receivable. So we have two more T accounts. Go sales, revenue, and accounts receivable. Okay, we made the sale and that's traditionally on what side? Credit, okay, so we're gonna go eight. We made a sale of 280,000. And we're expecting how much? 280,000 in about a month. Okay. Okay, is that, are we done with that whole transaction? We gotta move from finished goods to cost of goods sold, right? Okay, so finished goods, where are we? Here we go. We sold 30, I'm sorry, 35,000 units. And it came out to a total of 185. So we're going to transfer out $185,000 out of there. And then this is going to be transferred, kind of ran out of space over there, our cost of goods sold account. That's going to be debited 185. And that was transaction eight. Still balanced? Yes, so far so good. Transaction nine, now let's clean up house. This is pretty much it. We sort of tracked everything from the beginning to the end. Now we gotta make sure we'll be close enough on our manufacturing overhead, right? Because we had a predetermined allocated rate of 58,500. Uh, I'm sorry, 59,000. And we have an actual amount. 58,500 was the actual amount of overhead that we actually incurred during this accounting period. No yawns. <laughs> it's not that boring. Uh, we're there. So we allocated nine. So what does that mean? We over allocated. So how do we put that into a T account? How do we finish up? How do we clean up this whole thing? So we have 2,000, 1,500, 35,000, and 20,000. 
The total of that was 58,500. And we, were all, we allocated 59,000. So our remaining balance Five hundred. We overallocated by five hundred bucks. So manufacturing overhead. We're gonna put that in here. This is transaction nine to clean up. Five hundred. Now we're balanced here. And on the flip side, we're gonna put the other five hundred bucks. Cost of goods sold on what side? Nine. So we're balanced out here. We have 59,000 on this side, 59,000 on this side. And here, what is our cost of goods sold going to be? Our ending balance for cost of goods sold. We have 185,000 minus 500. 184.5. All done, easy squeezy, lemon peasy. That's it. You looking for more? <laughs> I can give you more. This is what it's going to look like. So the question, in this case, a lot more T accounts. So the difference, major difference, where's our cost of good manufacturing? It's OK. Where's our cost of good manufacturing? Not there. Huge difference, right? Because we're going, each whip is its own cost of good manufacturing. Each balance that we transfer, so I'm sorry, this one doesn't transfer from here to here to here. That is our basically cost of good manufacturing. So am I going to ask you cost of good manufacturing on the exam? No, no. But you got to get really comfortable with all of our T accounts. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 T accounts.